good afternoon everybody uh, we have a next uh, session by mr david chua who is the director of uh, distribution business asia pacific south hgst a uh, western digital company and uh, he would be talking on the topic cloud two fundamental building blocks ssds and big fat sata and sas hdds i this is over to uh, david thank you thank you good afternoon today i'm going to talk about the two fundamental building blocks ssd and high capacity hard drive data created by mobile devices more content and data available in the internet creating a lot of opportunity for storage in the cloud and local storage devices new terms are coming out like public cloud private cloud we will talk about that later some people think that when we are going to build cloud storage in the internet is all about using value or chip hard drive what we learn as a company is is actually consists of different type of storage like ssd performance hard drive large capacity hard drive in short it consists of broad mix of storage we have information for those who are going to build a data center for those who are going to build system for the cloud and for those who want to learn more about cloud storage and also for people who has plan to move their business to the cloud and also for people who intend to build software application for the cloud we are going to provide background on cloud in general and share other information we had learned from cloud storage on march 8 2012 global regulator approved western digital acquisition of hitachi global storage technology hitachi gst is now called hgst and is a separate subsidiary of western digital hgst engineering team with legacy from ibm pioneered the creation of the hard drive and we develop advanced hard disk drive solid state drive and personal storage that store the world's data hgst hard drive and ssd are found in the world leading desktop notebook ultrabook server storage system ce devices automobile and both cloud and online services our success comes from having the highest reliability in the industry the right portfolio of products and a trusted consultative relationship with our partners hgst has one of the most broad storage products portfolio in the industry ranging from consumer consumer electronics okay pc server and the cloud what is the cloud there's a lot of definition on what the cloud is in us there's an organization national institute of standard and technology written out definition of cloud that pretty much everybody in the world use but it's kind of too technical here in is hgst we came out with our own definition of cloud a cloud data center that operate closer to full capacity that regular data center because of the use of technology like virtualization to use up all the server they have example as one customer need more capacity more capacity will be delivered to them as one customer stop using the capacity is squeeze out others can use it is all talk about being flexible in resources server storage and networking capability key thing in the cloud unlike traditional it or traditional internet data center it operate like a electricity company or water utility company if you are going to use a cloud service you only to pay for the resources used just like when you turn on the light you will get charged on the electricity if you using cloud computing or cloud services you going to be charged for the piece you pay unlike going to buy the entire or whole server a cloud can be inside your company which we call it a private cloud or internal cloud or can be external to a company or a combination of both fundamentally what a cloud can do in term of okay commercial business is going to extend or replace your data center your it resources for application gaming contents or whatever how we see the cloud as hgst is pretty much anything you access across network 
using a browser or an apps. There are two categories. Within the number of services provided there, there are software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, storage as a service. These are the terms that you are going to hear a lot when we talk about cloud. It's good to know the term. Most of the time, storage as a service is going to be found in the infrastructure layer. If you have an application or game that you want to run in the cloud, you look for a cloud service company, you are using their infrastructure as you want to use their service as host for your application data. Other thing we look into cloud are online application, social networking like Facebook, email, sharing a file, streaming a video, lots of tool application out there in the cloud. Cloud types. This is something very interesting. Traditional IT, you, you have your own company, you have your own IT departments, okay, you own your server, storage. Typically, sales will have their own server, engineering will have their own server, marketing too. Everybody has their own server. Somebody's server use 100%, some use maybe 5 to 10%. I give an example, like engineering R&D may use up 100%, sales only 5%. Engineering will request to buy another server. That's how it works in traditional IT. They just continue to buy more, even sales is underutilized. A lot of companies want to have a better utilization of ser server. Example, you want to use your server storage to full capacity. You build something called private cloud. You still own the resources and going to pull them together, share them, no longer has a sales server, engineering server, marketing server. You put them together, people use the resources they need, and you start to save a little money. Public cloud is just like Amazon in North America. Resources are with a third party company. Someone else owns the server and storage. You start to pay by usage, like electricity company or water utility company. Your data and application might be run in the server, and the same server might be running somebody else's application. Through this virtualization technology, they are keep separated. Your data might be the, at the same server as your competitors. They stay private, but people might have the concern. When you use public cloud, people share resources with hundreds and thousands of different people. This becomes the cheapest way to build a big data center. The problem is the data application is outside your business. Hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is a combination of different types of cloud. For example, company may say they have secret or confidential info, they want to keep it inside their company and do not want to put it in the public cloud. They have other application jobs which is not so sensitive, which they want to put it in the public cloud. By combining different types of cloud, you get good efficiency, good costing, you put the data to where you feel comfortable. We are seeing more and more company moving into hybrids. How big is cloud? How big and how fast the cloud is growing? No analyst has a very good view on that because the number of data center of cloud company are kept secret. The numbers of server are kept secret. Let's try to look at some of the traffic from some bigger cloud website. Amazon. The world's largest cloud computing service provider, just in their storage business alone, recently reported they are storing 905 billion objects. An object can be a file, and sometimes files are broken down into smaller pieces, and each can be a few bytes to as huge as 2 to 4 TB. Google does more than 5,000 search per second in US alone. People are uploading 72 hours of video per minute into YouTube. And people are posting more than 300 millions of photo video per day into Facebook. Twitter, more than three, 340 million tweets per day. All these companies don't just keep one copy of this information. They can have three, six, ten copy of this information in different server, different data center. That is to protect the data just in case data center encounter failure. Data still can be accessible in addition, they move the data to different data centers to optimize performance. 
Example, Amazon, Facebook, Google has server in different geography. An example, there are some UK cloud company set up data center in US because they have customers that work on both sides and they want to move the data center to where the people are. When you see 905 billion objects stored by Amazon, they have multiple copies of that and amount of storage opportunity for it is huge. And where is cloud going and growing? Over the next few years, 2015 or so, estimated 4 billion people will be connected in the world and over 50 billion connected devices. Today, just think about how many connected devices you have yourself, like routers, phone, tablets, notebook, computer, monitoring camera. The amount of data generated by all these devices will be storing somewhere in the cloud. Look at all the activities in the internet. Look at the growth of 4 billion people, 50 billion devices. What does that mean in terms of data center? Look at below. Data center is going to grow in size and power consumption by data center is going to grow tremendously. Number of server going into cloud types are growing from 10,000 to 20,000, 40,000 or more in just one data center alone. Coming to storage behind that, people are no longer talking about gigabyte, terabyte, it's going to be petabyte, exabyte. Why is driving the cloud? One of the terms you will hear a lot from people talking about is anything, anywhere, anytime. When you have a phone, tablets, or PC, with the cloud, you are always connected to internet. Internet is a global network. You have the ability anything to get anything anywhere, anytime, provided you put it in the cloud. Social network. We know how popular it becomes. That way, that's the way, okay, young people connect, communicate now. Not messaging, not talking over the phone, just through social networking. We mentioned before how data center copy or replicate data several times, putting your data in the cloud. You are protecting your data from disaster within your home or your office. The last point over here, that's what we talk about, okay, in the first part of the presentation. By pooling, virtualization, and sharing your resources, you can save money. No need to have too much capital. That is the thing that's driving the crowd. People are asking, when is everything moving to the cloud? Answer is, it's going to be a long time. Cloud has a lot of good benefit, but still have some issue. One of them is, how long does it take for you to put a file to the cloud? Even in places that has fast in internet access, the upload time was still very long. Typically, six weeks to copy a TV. Faster network, maybe 13 days. Hence, it's very difficult to put a lot of content in the cloud. Network connectivity is also a concern. Are you able to get onto the network? It depends on where you are. Security, when I, when I put my data or my file in the cloud, is it safe? Can people see it? Can people tamper with it? You put your data in the cloud. Are you sure the company is going to be there next month? You need to do high frequency type of access to your data. Can you wait for data to come from data center at other side of the country? Cloud provides a lot of benefits. There are still some bugs in the cloud that prevent everything to move onto the cloud quickly. We believe the cloud ecosystem is driving new way of thinking about data, application, server, data center, and storage. They are shift in business and technology model. that creating opportunity for those that move quickly. Some of the key mega trend, storage system started to change. The architecture, different type of server coming. The supply chain is changing because data center vendor are building their own server storage and no longer getting from the same OEM which they typically gone to. Open source software available and new initiative. We talk a lot about pooling and virtualization, all about sharing of resources. 
and TCO, total cost of ownership. TCO is one of the big trends in the cloud space. TCO become a critical decision factor. It's not about the price of the device and hardware anymore. It's about total cost of ownership. We are going to talk a lot more in detail in the next few slides. For those who work in the enterprise space, for year and year we are talking about rate. That's how you do data protection. We found more, most of the data centers slowly moving away from RAID and using okay, replication. Replication is just making entire copy of data into another server and maybe another data center. Why they did this? Because we're starting to making bigger and bigger hard drive like 2 TB, 3 TB, 4 TB. The amount of time they take to rebuild a RAID array after failure becomes so long. Hence, the crowd vendor think that it's more efficient for them to make copies of data and not doing RAID anymore. Storage tiering. We see this in the numbers of data centers and growing more and more. The idea here is using high capacity SAS drive, using SSD, using 10K RPM drive. In that way, you can balance capacity, performance, and cost. Putting all 7200 RPM drive give you the best dollar per gigabyte. Not necessarily give you the performance they need for certain application. Going all to SSD, that's going to cost too much. Because of our portfolio, we have SAS, we have SSD, we have 10K, 15K, 7200 RPM, allow us to provide good balance for cloud data center. One of the misconceptions about cloud is built on cheap desktop hard drive. Because the cloud is running 24 by 7, people access it globally, you really cannot use a desktop drive for that purpose. It's not built for that kind of duty cycle because people always come in to access data. And more and more people starting to use as drive, moving away from desktop drive to enterprise class of drive, and that is our recommendation as well. TCO is becoming critical. Technically, acquisition price is also part of the TCO. One of the things that we want to get across here, historically, people look at this drive, they care about the price, feature, okay, performance. In the cloud, because of the number of servers that put in the data center, because amount of storage, amount of power being consumed by it, people who build cloud data center are thinking it's not about the price. They care about how much power this drive consumes. They care about how many TV you can put in a square foot, cubic foot, all about density and reliability. If you have 40,000 servers, each server has 12 drive, you've got to encounter failure very frequent. Okay? That means you need to have someone out there pull out the drive, put in a new one, that's going to cost money. Another thing which is very interesting is we have people in the crowd mention that weight is very important to them because some of the crowd in, not in APEC, is mostly in Europe or North America, data centers are going into old buildings in downtown area where the floor may not be able to hold the weight. This, there is a restriction on how much weight they can have. Then they will look at how much capacity, how much density, how much TV they can get, divide by square foot, cubic foot, and how much is the weight. Hence, five platters, seven platters are very important okay, to crowd because they look at power, they look at land density, they look at system weight, HGST, we have an advantage here. And why use enterprise class hard drive for the crowd? High reliability, 2 million hour MTBF, built for 24 by 7, 365 days, 5 years warranty, performance optimized for enterprise workload. You will be surprised. A lot of customers in crowd space doesn't understand what is MTBF. It helps to calculate the failure rate. That helps to detect the TCO. We offer 2 million hours on our Ultrastar products. Our competitors, 1.2 million hours. It means that we have 40% fewer failure across the population of drive. Better performance for the data center, higher uptime. These are some of the value you get from high reliability. Why one watt of power matter? We talk more about power. 
we have a product that consumes one watt less than our competitors, lots of people will say, does it matter? Just one watt. At the scale of the data center, which we're talking about, every watt matter. Let's look at a very simple calculation over here. One watt power reduction in a hard drive multiplied by 24 hours and multiplied by 365 days. Let's take five years as a duration. Okay, and per server, they are 12 drive and they are 25,000 server. Can you imagine how much power you save? Each kilowatt, okay, is if equivalent to a 10 cent US dollars, you are sav saving $1.3 million. You can see the reduction power in this drive by one watt. Save $1.3 million, and that's why every watt count. And you also need to look into cooling. If drive is running hot, you have to cool more. That add on to cost of the power. That's why we're always trying to drive lower possible power consumption, and that's where we have some advantage. On this chart, you can see that from the far left, there are a few milliseconds of latency, 10 to 15 milliseconds of latency. That's the performance of the drive. On the bottom, that is the capacity. Key thing, we want to point out certain application like HF trading, stand for high frequency trading, R tape, real time analytic. These things do not need much capacity. They need high performance. Go to the bottom right, we have thing called big data, content, storage, music, movie, archive, this thing no need performance, they need a lot of capacity. Hence, petabyte moving to exabyte is going to be the trend. We also have some application on the middle, like the crowd gaming. The charts show that there's a broad spectrum of application. Some of them need performance, some of them need capacity, and some of them need balance in between. Choosing the right storage solution. We talk about storage tiering. We talk about those layer. We want to talk about our product line. Okay. We want to talk about SSD. We have the best performance, best IOPS per dollar, best IOPS per watt. On the extreme, we have 7200 RPM, SAS, and SATA drive. That's where we get best dollar per TB. And we also have 10K, 15K RPM SAS drive that balance performance and capacity. Will SSD replace hard drive in the cloud? The answer is no. From the previous chart, you can see that how much data generated from the cloud. What we believe is SSD will carry significant price premium over enterprise drive. Second thing, we believe that this drive and SSD going to coexist and complementary. In the previous slide, some applications do not need a lot of capacity, they need performance. And others need capacity, not so much on performance, that's why we believe that both of these are going to coexist for quite some time. The cloud, is, the cloud is driving new architecture and approach to solve problem. This allows people to be innovative. HGST with broad range of products help them to create new application and server. Another key point, one size doesn't fit all. Storage tiering, balance capacity and performance need. Last point is storage is no longer defined by price and capacity. Total cost of ownership is critical. Thank you.